Hey everybody, this is graphic designer Roberto Blake, and welcome to another Photoshop CC retouching tutorial. If you're just finding my channel for the first time, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get new Photoshop CC videos every week. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to be talking about some of the secrets of dodging and burning. Now if you haven't watched my speed art uh, videos that I do on the weekends, um, then you may not be familiar with a technique that I refer to as painting with light. Essentially, instead of using the traditional dodge and burn tools, although I do use those, a lot of times I'll use um, a simple soft light or overlay layer and paint with either white or black in order to create contrast in my images. This is why I refer to as painting with light. Essentially, we're doing the same things we would do with the dodge and burn tools in order to darken dark areas and bring out more contrast in them and lighten light areas, such as the eyes or around the cheeks here, etc. So I'm going to be doing that using the brush tool and I'm going to show you a few different techniques that you can use in order to create non-destructive dodging and burning using those tools. So let me run you through a little bit of uh, quick before and after. You can see that this is my finished image here and when I click off you can see what this looks like before. Now this is my own original photography. Um, I took this shot at KatsuCon this year but um, you know it's a good shot and already has some decent contrast in it but compared to the end result it feels a little flat so I'm going to show you how to create that type of end result here using the tools that we just talked about now in this tutorial I'm going to be using a Wacom Intuos tablet but if you don't happen to have a pen tablet you can still follow along with this tutorial for the most part um, in this case I'm going to have my brush set to 50% and my flow to 40% to force me to um, you know kind of disperse this evenly and do some build up so I don't overdo anything. Uh, let's go ahead and go into our brush shape presets and you're gonna want to um, set the minimum diameter to something like 30 or 40% to get this effect here um, and set that to pen pressure sensitivity. So if you do that you should be good to go. Go ahead and create a brush of any size, create a new layer, and set the blend mode to soft light. Now again, this is just going to be one um, really quick technique before we move on to others, and I'm actually just going to use a singular layer for both dodge and burn. Now traditionally I and a lot of other people like to do separate layers for this but in this case I'm just going to use this workflow to keep things simple for you and to show you that you can in fact you know do this on a singular layer if you need to for performance reasons. So I'm going to start with uh, burning which just makes something dark and I'm going to start with that on this model just because it's going to be easier to show you you know the changes as they're happening if I do that. So let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit. That looks good. And I'm just going to try and build this up. And you can see what a difference that makes. I can, in fact, I can take my opacity down to something like maybe around 30%, and that'll be okay just so that I can keep things more subtle. And I'm going to focus on areas that I know I need to get darker, such as the eyebrows, the eyelashes, and things like that. And you can see that, again, using the settings that I have here with the um, pressure sensitivity and the flow are forcing me to be very subtle and to build this up and to really work on it so I don't overdo anything. And you can see that that's making a difference. If I click off and I click back on. The other thing that you want to keep in mind with this, in addition to just darkening these areas that obviously need to be darkened, is you can use this to create um, shapes and um, also color casting and just add definition. Uh, so I'm going to reduce this to about maybe 15-20% here. And I'm going to build out uh, the shape of her nose a bit more. And you can see what a difference that's making. I'm going to do the same thing subtly here for her cheek and so that it doesn't create, you know, just a line that doesn't make any sense and I'm actually going to undo some of that. Like 
a snapshot. I'm just going to do this a little more subtly by making my brush a bit larger and just build out more of her cheek area here as she has some really great cheekbones and features and that's the kind of thing you want to use this tool for is you want to bring out the best in your model. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to turn everything that I'm doing down to about 80-75% so that I can't possibly overdo it. And you can see that that's actually coming out pretty good. So I'll just go back in, and I'll do some of these beads, get some of the dark areas in here to make these stand out more and bring more detail into them. And again, you can just do whatever you think your particular image needs, but in this case, I'm just making sure I'm getting these dark areas and creating some interesting values, contrast, and building some shapes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit here with the lips. And I'll just gradually build that up. And around here to create some visual balance and some depth. And again, you can see that this is making a clear difference in our picture and it's just making it feel a lot less flat, it's more intense, it's more attractive, and it adds some definition there. You know, and that's the thing. So you want to do this as subtly as you can and that's why I refer to it as um, painting with light. And that's, you know, a phrase that was coined by Thomas Kincaid. Uh, I'm sure you've probably seen his painting somewhere before. And you know, right now I'm focusing on the burn and we'll get to dodge in a minute. But in this case, when you're working with um, people with um, lighter skin textures and tones, you want to maybe focus on the burn because that's where a lot of your contrast is going to come from and where you're going to see the most deference uh, clearly. So that's why I'm doing that and it's just something for you to think about. And these are some interesting shapes. I'm going to go ahead and move down and I'm going to work on this arm a little bit get a large brush so I can create levels and just kind of build this up gradually. And you know, with the arms, this technique is what you'd want to do with your um, sports models in order to build up definition in the muscles and things like that. And you'll want to do this with um, swimsuit models, particularly um, you know, working with the uh, thighs and what have you. You can see the difference that that's making. That actually is looking pretty good. You know, and again, subtlety is the thing here, so try not to overdo it and keep that in mind. All right, I'm just going to darken up some areas in the hair here and we'll add some highlights to that later. That's actually coming out nice and what you want to do sometimes with the hair is you want to create um, contrast in a way that creates framing elements for the hair. So you want to focus on areas around the face of the model and just kind of build up these interesting shapes and lights there and um, you know, get some of these areas a little darker. And then in this case, I'm gonna actually darken up the uh, pupils there a little bit. That 
feels good. And I'm going to zoom out. And again, you can already see the big difference this has made, and we haven't even added in um, dodging yet. So you can already see the difference that this is making in our image. Now, we can go ahead and we can do dodge on this layer, or we could do it on another soft light layer. And just for the sake of keeping you know this clean and separated, I'm going to do that. Let's just call this burn. Call this one dodge. I'll just go ahead and I'll lock my burn layer so that we keep this tidy. All right, so you can see that I've switched to um, a white brush here. And now we can do our dodging. And that's too much. With the dodging, you'll probably want to tone down the opacity a bit more because you'll want this to be even more subtle than us working with the burn, especially with this type of model, because it'll just be um, a lot more pronounced. You can also use the dodge tool to create um, directional lighting, and you've seen me do that before. So we can do that, and that looks interesting. And directional lighting can add some context to the overall image. Um, just be careful with it. And in this case, one of the things we definitely want to do is we want to brighten up these eyes. So we're just going to subtly go in there with that. And we'll just clean this up a little with the erase tool. There we go. Bring back our brush. I think that's actually starting to look really nice. Oops. and soft light, voila. Makes a big difference. I mean, if we wanted to make this more intense, we could set this to overlay, but I don't feel the need to do that. We can keep it on soft light. That's one of the good things about having these on the individual separate layers is it does give you those options. And again, you can erase on these, and this keeps the dodging and burning that you're doing uh, non-destructive. If you wanted to take it further, you could create um, solid fill blocks of black and white, set them to either soft light and overlay, and then create masking and paint them in and out as needed. And that would be another way to do this non-destructively. I just don't usually do that because it creates another intermediate step that I don't really need. But again, you can see the huge difference that this makes in our image having both of these layers here. It creates a lot of contrast, it creates some depth, and it just makes it a more visually appealing and attractive overall image. Now, if you're not familiar with the dodge and burn tools themselves, but you want to create this kind of contrast and you're just more comfortable working with the brush tools, then this is a good technique for you and this will also help you a little bit with overall pen control. And I think, um, you know, it'll just be a really good exercise for you in your images. And you can see that I've been able to do some very interesting things like, um, you know, create 
um, light casting and dramatic lighting and directional lighting using these similar techniques as well if you've watched any of my speed art videos. So again, it's just something to think about and it's another way to use the same tools that we're covering here. Um, and again, you can use this to also build out shapes. Like with regard to the jewelry, you can intensify the specific shadows in those individual places. You could even change a little bit of the way the lighting is working. There's just so much that you can do with this because you have the ability to paint and build it up. And it'll make a huge difference in what your overall end result is. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you guys have videos that you'd like me to do covering different tools or techniques in Photoshop, or if you have questions, definitely leave those in the comments below. I do a really good job of trying to respond to everybody. If you have an idea for another Photoshop CC tutorial video that I should do, please also let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video if you like it, watch the other videos in my Photoshop CC tutorial series, and as always, thanks for watching.